Today we look into the battery life of five cycling GPS units. A common question that came up this week after looking at the Element Bolt was how long does the battery actually last for? Well, I thought rather than just answer for the Bolt, I'll go through all the GPS units that I have and we'll run some real world tests. So I'll run you through the five units I've got access to and I'll tell you how I tested them. First up, I've got a Garmin Edge 800, which is a few years old now, so probably not a good test given it's had a pretty hard life, but it's thrown in the mix. We have a Garmin Edge 820, relatively new, six months old. We have the new Element Bolt. We have an original Element, which is only about six months old, so that's a good test as well. And new player in the market, well, my market here at home, is the PowerTap Dual GPS Plus unit. I haven't actually covered this one yet. I haven't even unboxed it. This was the first unboxing when I put it up here on the windowsill with the rest. So there's the five units I've got to test. The 800 is probably not a good test because it is so old, but we'll soldier on and just see how well the battery goes after a few years. Okay, the testing environment that I used. Well, it was up here on the windowsill of the room that I'm in now, which has a good line of sight to GPS. It will pick up GPS, so GPS was turned on. The recording interval was turned to one second for every device. I used an Ant Plus simulator utility to simulate four devices. I had a power meter, a speed sensor, a cadence sensor, and a heart rate monitor, all broadcasting out flatline data. So there was recording data from four different Ant Plus devices. I had no LED lights showing on the element unit, so no LEDs along the side, which could reduce battery life. Uh, there were no screen presses or interactions. So that was the test lab that I'd set up. Look, it isn't representative of how you'd use these out in the real world. You'd have your Bluetooth synced up, you'd have screen interactions, you'd have lap buttons, you'd be stopping at coffee shops and things like that. So it's the best I could do though, and it was all equal across all five units. With that configuration in place, I hit go, and I let them run until they all went flat. So I set those running at about half past 10 at night. Here's the check-in the next morning. We have the element still on, we have the element bolt still on, the 800 has given up the ghost. The 820 is still going strong. Power tap Cal is still going strong. Um, battery level on the Cal is down to one bar. I'm oh, sorry, it's the Joule. Cal. Calories. Joules. You see where I'm going with that. Once all the units had switched themselves off, the next challenge was to turn them back on and make sure I could get the file off the unit. By having these units record to complete shutdown or complete power out, really not a good thing. They all handled being turned back on a little differently as well. The 820 took a while to turn back on. I think it might have repaired the file and got it working. The 800 just turned on, it just trucked through. Don't know what happened there, but the 800 was quite reliable. The Element Bolt, it put up a little sad face message initially and then started rebuilding the file from 0% to 100%. Uh, the original Element was fine, that just seemed to turn on okay. And the Jewel, I was unable to actually extract the file off the Jewel. I couldn't plug it in as a USB drive. I tried a Windows machine, I tried a Mac machine, I tried a virtual Windows machine, no go. I tried to upload via the app via Bluetooth, that kept failing as well. So I wasn't able to get the file off the Jewel unit. Not sure what's going on there. I did get the time that it took though. Okay, the numbers, that's what we're all here for. First up, Garmin Edge 800, seven hours and nine seconds. Not really that good. The claimed battery life of the Edge 800 is 15 hours. This unit's a few years old, so I now call this the glass half empty GPS. It only lasted seven hours and nine seconds. Next up, well, doubling that was the PowerTap Jewel unit. So that came in at 15 hours, 35 minutes, 11 seconds. This also was a brand new unit, charged fully to the top, like all these units were charged right to 100% before starting. PowerTap do claim 17 hours. It fell a little short of the actual claims there. Next up, and this was super, super interesting. It was the Bolt head-to-head -head with the Garmin 820. These things were one minute apart. I had to double check the data quite a few times, so I probably quadruple checked the data. The Bolt, 16 hours, eight minutes, 23 seconds. Again, with a claimed battery life of 15 hours, that's not too bad. The Edge 820 lasted 16 hours, nine minutes, 23 seconds. With a claimed time of 15 hour battery life, that's actually pretty good. So King of the Castle, the original element unit. 17 hours, 36 minutes, 21 seconds. Not bad at all, uh, to be expected given the size of the unit. I was quite happy to see the claimed battery life on these things be exceeded in a few instances. That was kind of cool. Remembering I didn't have Bluetooth turned on and I had no interaction with these units. So it was kind of a in a vacuum lab test environment. Um, the 820 as well, I made sure I didn't turn the power save mode on. When the 820 gets to about 10% battery life, it can go into a certain power save mode. I didn't have that enabled. I said no to that on the screen, so there was one press interaction. 
very short though, so that shouldn't be uh, shouldn't have impacted the results too much. So as an added bonus, I loaded these four files because I couldn't get the fifth out of the jewel onto DC Rainmakers Analysis site. Uh, you know I love this site. So here's the elevation data though. This is kind of cool. You can see them start off, start off, start off, and they start going up, up, up. Well, let's forget the Garmin 800. It didn't know what it was doing until it died out at about seven hours. But the two element units and the Garmin 820 sort of continue to track along, track along. Now they thought they were going up in elevation and they sort of leveled off a bit. Then they went up again after a few hours. Interesting stuff. So I jumped over to weatherzone.com.au and grabbed the air pressure graph the last 24 hours of the nearest weather station. Something very interesting I observed. They're almost an inverse graph of what these devices recorded as their elevation, even though they were sitting in the same spot, and what was recorded at the nearest weather station. Really interesting. Weather buffs, you know what's going on. Tech nerds, you know what's happening. But this video is just about battery life, so we'll just keep it to the battery life data for now. Kind of cool though, hey. Alrighty, we'll leave it there for now. Remember, out in the road, your mileage will vary, and it will definitely be lower than the maximums we've got here. There was a lot of things we didn't enable, so Bluetooth, backlights, no screen interaction, no lap pressing, so you will get less than those, but that should be a good indication about what you can expect in comparison. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.